Hi, I'm Daniel Chan from UNSW Sydney. Welcome to another adventure in pure mathematics. Today, I want to introduce the fundamental notion of tensors, which can be used to reduce multilinear algebra to linear algebra. This is an extremely important tool that's used especially in differential geometry and hence also in physics. Okay, so the introduction I want to give today uh, starts by looking at what I call the coordinate definition. Okay, so we start, of course, with some base field, which I'll, which I'll denote with this double barrel F, and we're going to have two vector spaces, V and W, over this fixed field F. Uh, it's going to be a coordinate definition, which is not the best way to do it, but it gives us a good feel immediately of what this object looks like. Okay, so to have a coordinate definition, we need some bases. So let's suppose we have bases for V and W. So the bases for V consists of these little VIs where I runs through the index set big I, and the other basis for W is the WJs, as little j runs through this big J. To motivate this definition, you might want to think, well, what are ways we can build a vector space from these two vector spaces? Okay, so one way to do it is to look at the direct sum, V direct sum W. Okay, so there's a very simple definition using uh, pairs inside here. But if you want to think of it in terms of coordinates, you think of it in terms of bases. And one way to think of this is, well, the basis for this is just the disjoint union of the bases for V and W. So it's just basically just the F space, which has bases, the disjoint union of the set of VIs with the set of WJs. Okay. So let's use this to motivate our definition for the tensor product. Okay, so what's the tensor product of V and W? Okay, it's also going to be a vector space over F, and the way we'll denote it is like this, V tensor over F, W, so the subscript F here is uh, used because we're looking at vector spaces over F, but we'll drop it if this is understood. We'll just say what the basis is. And the basis are basically just going to be, instead of the disjoint union of these two bases, we'll just take the Cartesian product. Okay, so that's what we'll do. But we won't write it as the Cartesian product. What we'll do is we'll use this tensor symbol. But it's basically going to be the same thing. Okay, it's the set of all these VI tensor WJs. So this is just a formal symbol here. Okay, so it's just uh, this uh, tensor product is this vector space with this basis. So what does that mean? Okay, so basically what that means is that since the basis, every element in here can be written as a linear combination of elements inside here. So this vector space is just formal linear combinations of elements uh, of these elements. Okay, so you can take an element VI tends to WJ and you take linear combinations of these. So you sum over all alpha to the IJ. So the notation that I'm going to use here is going to follow the ones that's commonly used in differential geometry. So these superscripts don't mean powers, okay? So this is fairly common, and it's good to try to get used to this uh, different uh, notation, which is often used, okay? So in here, this, these are just superscripts to uh, denote uh, different values of these uh, scalars, okay? Alpha, ij, they're just scalars inside f, okay? So these aren't powers. Of course, uh, the bases might not be finite, Okay, so to make sense of this, okay, we need to make sure that this is going to be um, a finite sum. So that means all but finitely many of these coefficients out here are actually going to be zero. So this is just a finite sum. Okay, so uh, this is the tensor product of B and W. It's going to be a vector space over F, but it's a bad definition. And the reason why it's a bad definition is because it's defined in terms of a basis for V and for W. So if you're not given a basis for V and a W, then I guess you pick them, and then you always have to wonder, what well, is it independent of that choice? Okay. But one thing good about this definition is it tells you straight away what it looks like. Okay. So for example, you want to know uh, what does this vector space V tensor W look like? Here, the uh, field F is understood, so I'll drop it from the notation in this uh, symbol here. Okay. So I guess the key thing to understand a vector space is you just need to know what, it's, what is its dimension. So what's the dimension of V tensor W? Well, we've got a basis for it. So we just count the number of elements in the basis. Okay? So what is the basis? It's essentially the Cartesian product of the basis for V and the basis for W. So of course, that means that the number of elements in this basis is just the product of the number of elements in a basis of V. So that's the dimension of V times the dimension of W. Okay, so whereas the direct sum here, the dimension of this is the sum of the dimension of V and the dimension of W, 
Here, the dimension of the tensor product is, interestingly enough, the product of the dimensions of V and of W, which is a rather nice fact. Okay, so let's go through a simple example of a tensor product that you've actually seen before. Okay, so what we're going to do here is we're going to look over the field of complex numbers and we're going to consider this vector space here of complex polynomials in the indeterminate x. And we have a standard basis for that. They're just the powers of x, the non-negative powers of x, 1, x, x squared and so forth. We'll also look at another vector space here of now complex polynomials in uh, in determinants y and z. So the variables here are y and z. And if you think about that, that has a similar basis, okay? So you can look at the degree 0, 1, which is just 1. And then you can look at all the other monomials. So the degree 1 monomials are y and z. The degree 2 monomials are y squared, y z, and z squared, and so forth. Okay? So now let's look at this tensor product of these two vector spaces over C. Okay, so it's a tensor product over C. And basically, uh, this definition tells you what the basis is. So what's the basis? Okay. So remember, it's only well defined so far if you're given bases for these two vector spaces, which we have here. So it's basically the Cartesian product of those two, but we write them in this form. Okay, so we take a basis element here, say x to the i, and we write tensor and a basis element here. And the basis element here has the form y to the j, z to the l. Okay, so this is the set of uh, basis elements for this vector space. Of course, if you rewrite this um, tensor here, as x to the i, y to the j, z to the l, you'll see that these basis elements correspond precisely to these monomials inside the polynomial ring of with complex coefficients in the variables x, y, and z. Okay, And these are, of course, a natural basis for this uh, vector space here. So, of course, since the bases here correspond, you'll see that this uh, tensor product is... Uh, isomorphic to this vector space of complex polynomials in variables x, y, and z. So this is an example of a tensor product that you've actually seen before. Before I go on, I should mention the elements of this vector space are called tensors. Okay, So this is an example of a tensor and in general you have formal linear combinations of these. Okay, So you have finite uh, uh, linear combinations, finite formal linear combinations of them, okay? So that way you can add them together as well as scan and multiply them. Okay, so this is an example you've seen before. So to go on more with the theory, we need to look at the notion of elementary tensors. And that's going to also provide us a way to think about how you get away from a basis and get away from this coordinate definition. Okay, so we'll go back to this simple example here to try to motivate what goes on. Okay, so in this example here, we have this isomorphism of vector spaces. Here's a tensor product. Let's look on this side, okay, the uh, vector space we understand perhaps better. Okay, so what we can do inside here, okay, in this polynomial ring, uh, this vector space here, is we can look at uh, polynomials, which you can write in a very specific form. It's a product of a polynomial in X times a polynomial in Y and Z. So the polynomial x you can write in this form, the sum of p i x to the i. Okay, and the polynomial in y and z you can write in a similar form over here, the sum of q j l y to the j z to the l. Okay, so let's multiply these two. And of course, it's very simple how you multiply them. Here's your p of x, here's your q of y z to multiply these two. You just use the distributive law. And that gives you a double sum, sum over all the possibilities here, sum over all i and the sum over all the possibilities here, which are all the possible j and l, and you multiply the coefficients together, p, i, q, j, l, and then you multiply the corresponding uh, monomials, so x to the i, y to the j, z to the l. Okay? And of course, this will correspond to something uh, inside the tensor product, because these two vector spaces are isomorphic. Okay? So I just uh, replaced this monomial here with the corresponding monomial. Okay? So these are corresponding bases. And the coefficients stay the same out here. Okay, so this x to the i, y to the j, z to the l is x i tensor y to the j, z to the l. So what I want to do is I want to generalize this to not just the tensor product of this with this, okay, but of any vector space v with w. So we'll go back to this notation here, okay. So let's suppose now you have any uh, little v inside big v, okay. 
So you can write it as a linear combination, alpha to the i, v, i. And w inside big W, so W equals sum of beta j, w, j. And I want to talk about the elementary tensor V tensor W. Okay, so we've seen something similar in notation, the basis elements V, I tensor W, J, uh, where the tensor factors are basis elements V, I and W, J. But now what I want to do is I want to define it when you don't put in basis vectors inside here, but arbitrary vectors of big V and arbitrary vectors of big W here. Okay, so what's that equal to? So in other words, this V here, is this linear combination of VIs. This W is this linear combination of WJs. I want to do the same procedure here. I just kind of want to use a distributive law, okay? And if I just blindly apply the distributive law, that's going to give me my definition for an, a, a tensor, so an element in this tensor product, okay? So if I blindly apply the distributive law, I sum over all IJ, and it's a formal linear combination of VI tensor WJ, and what is the coefficient of v i tensor w j? It's just alpha i beta j like that. Okay. Now remember, all but finitely, finitely many of the alpha i are zero, and all but finitely many of the beta j are zero. So the true same is true here. Okay. All but finitely many of the alpha i beta j are going to be zero. Okay. So there's only going to be a finite uh, sum involved here. Okay. And so that gives you a notion of what's called an elementary tensor. Okay, it has the form V tensor W. And it's quite easy to see that the elementary tensors in this example here, if you think about elementary tensor, you've got a polynomial in X tensor a polynomial in YZ. Okay, when you go through what this is, it's precisely just uh, those polynomials in XYZ that you can write in this special form, a polynomial in X times a polynomial in Y and Z. Okay, so it's generalizing that sort of notion. So if you understand this example well, okay, and you'll see what's going on here. And in particular, you can see that not every polynomial in X, Y, and Z can be write in the form of polynomial in X times a polynomial in Y and Z. But they are, of course, linear combinations of things of this form. Okay? So that's a, a notion called an elementary tensor, one that you can write uh, uh, like this. Okay? So the example, so this uh, notation generalizes what you see over here, V, I, tensor, W, J. Okay? If the element V you picked here is just VI, and the element T you picked was just WJ. Of course, you get VI tensor WJ is that one single uh, basis element. And so in particular, that basis element is an example of an elementary tensor. Okay, so let's look at some basic properties of elementary tensors, which also show the relationship with multilinear algebra. Okay, so suppose we have vectors inside big V, V and V prime and vectors inside W, W and W prime. Suppose we look at the elementary tensor uh, where the element inside V is a sum. So V plus V prime tensor W. Okay, in this case it turns out to be uh, related to V tensor W and V prime tensor W. In fact, it's just the sum of them. And similarly, if you have a tensor product V tensor sum sum W plus W prime, you can do essentially what's a distributive law type of uh, decomposition, right, this is V tensor W plus V tensor W prime. So th this means that uh, you have the distributive law, so that's something between the way you do tensor products and addition. What about scalar multiplication and this tensor product? How are they related to each other? Okay, so that's the op other operation that you have in a vector space. So in suppose you look at this elementary tensor where you have alpha V instead of V tensor W, how is that related to V tensor W? Well, it's just alpha times V tensor W. So that's a rather nice sort of a theorem, which basically means that you can pull this out. And it doesn't matter how you write this symbol here. You can just write it as alpha V. Uh, you can remove the brackets and they'll look the same. And that's OK, because they are the same uh, vector inside that tensor product of vector spaces. Similarly, you can look at V tensor alpha W. And that's also related to V tensor W the same way. It's just alpha times V tensor W. And the proofs of these are very, very simple. I'll just do this first equation here. Okay, so suppose you have V plus V prime. V is this sum of alpha I, V I. And this V prime is sum of alpha prime I, V I. And so that's what you have here. When you add these together, the coefficient of V I is alpha I plus alpha prime I. Okay, and you tensor that with this sum of beta J, W J. Okay, so remember the formula for taking the elementary uh, tensor. Okay, what is, how is that defined? 
Okay, this is a tensor, so it is a linear combination of the basis vectors VI tensor WJ, and basically you pretend the distributive law works, which is why it's going to give us the distributive law over here, okay? So uh, what you do is you just take the sum over all the possibilities here, I, and all the possibilities here, J, and you look at the products of the corresponding coefficients, alpha I plus alpha prime I times beta J. Now you can use the usual distributive law for numbers, for scalars inside our field F, to split this up as the sum of alpha i beta j v i tensor w j that's what you see here which is just v tensor w and the other one is just uh, the alpha prime i beta to the j is the coefficient of v i tensor w j that's what you have here and that's v prime tensor w and that is just a very quick proof of the distributive law the left distributive law uh, for the tensor products here okay so that's a rather nice fact okay so this actually gives us the link between multilinear algebra and tensor products because what this fact really just says is, the, uh, is that if we look at the following map from the Cartesian product v cross w so this is just a function from v cross w to v tensor w okay that's no longer a linear map but it's what you call bilinear so the map here is it sends uh, the pair v comma w to v the elementary tensor v tensor w that function there is a bilinear map so what do I mean by a bilinear map? So this function is a function of pairs of v comma w. To be bilinear means it's linear in both v and w. So for any fixed w, if I hold this w constant, okay, any w constant, and I look at this as just a function of v, then it's linear in that v. And similarly, it's also linear in w. So if I hold the v constant, and I look at this as a function of w, it's linear inside that as well. Okay, so let's just see how that works. So to check... Uh, the statement what we do is we hold either w or v constant so let's suppose we hold w constant let's fix this w here and we check that in this first variable it's actually uh, additive and also preserves scalar multiplication well what does it do to a sum v plus v prime okay when you tensor with a w this is just v tensor w plus v prime tensor w so for fix w uh, this tensoring with w uh, is actually an additive map okay what about if instead of applying this tensor with w to v you apply it to alpha v can you just pull out the scalar well that is indeed just alpha times v tensor w so they're the two axioms for a linear map so we've shown that for fixed w any fixed w okay this uh, function here is linear in v and the other uh, equations that you have here show that it's also linear in w if you hold v constant so that uh, means that's bilinear it's linear in each of the two variables and generally in linear multi-linear algebra you look at uh, functions which are linear in several variables okay so that gives us the link and that's going to be how we uh, approach it so the other thing that i want to mention is that why are we looking at elementary tensors here okay so what we want to do and one of the deficiencies in how i define the tensor product today is that it depends on a basis but fortunately so so in particular the basis uh, for big V and for W gives you the basis for the tensor product okay but what you can do is of course rather than looking at tensors of this form you look at all elementary tensors where this runs over all of V and this runs over all of W and you can ask well is that set of elementary tensors is that kind of basis free in some sense and the answer is yes and if you look back at that example that I gave you where we had we, where we described the uh, vector space of complex polynomials in x, y, and z as the tensor product of complex polynomials in x and complex polynomials in y and z, we saw that the elementary tensors, it can be described independent of our choice of basis, okay? It's just a polynomial in x times a polynomial in y and z, okay? It didn't matter what basis we picked for the vector space of polynomials in x, nor what basis we picked for the vector space of polynomials in y and z, okay? It's just of that form where you can write it as a product of a polynomial in x and a product of uh, polynomial in y and z so what we're going to do in the next video is we're going to use the set of elementary tensors to come up with a coordinate free definition of the tensor product i hope you enjoyed this adventure in pure mathematics